Um, I have a question that's kind of harkens back to what we were saying about healthcare and working class healthcare workers, predominantly being working class women of color, servicing working class people. I wanted to know what your thoughts may be on in terms of demystifying any type of separation that exists, because I come from a family of healthcare workers, uh, black women, and unfortunately, because sometimes when working class people end up working in institutions, they start to absorb some of the ideologies of these institutions toward their own people. Mm -hmm. So what does this kind of demystification look like? What do you think a political education would look like in that context? Um, and how do we get people to identify with the institutions that, that are really exploiting their labor last as opposed to first? I mean, I, I don't think I have an a answer that's, uh, <laughs> that's not already embedded in your question. You know, I mean, I feel like most of the time, you know, when we ask questions like that, it's because we already know, you know? It's kind of like, I always call it, it's like that, that feel me variety of questions, you know, where you, you don't ask somebody feel me unless you know they do already. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a moment of, so, so I think the, the answer is already given there, first of all, in what people could call or used to call, you know, political education. Um, it, it, it means, See, I think stuff, I think, I just feel like people start to, you know, when, 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 what, well, so I'm not answering this as if, I'm not, I, we just talking, right? Yeah, please. So I'm not trying to, I'm not, I'm not trying to answer the question as if I have an answer to the question or as if I, well, I've been studying this for many years. So let me give you some of my thoughts. No, it's more like I can tell you what happened with, with, with me and, and, and some of my friends, but primarily my two best friends, you know, and how they came to be my best friends. I don't know. That's a whole other story that I got to try to figure out at a certain point. Um, but but Stefano, you know, who we've been friends for 35 years, and my partner Laura Harris, we've been together for 30 years. And this is what, you know, basically what we do did was what folks do. We would sit around and talk about the conditions under which we worked. Okay. And we would try to figure out why the conditions under which we work were so bad, why it had to be that way. Why is it that something that we went into because we thought we would enjoy it, and we thought not just that we would enjoy it, but that it was a good thing to do. See, I believe that most people, if they decide that they want to become a, you know, a healthcare worker or a nurse, that, you know, that, you know, people, only a cynical society would treat it as a cliche. When I believe people when they say they want to help people, like they want to take care of people, like they feel like it's a way, it's a really profound and important way of sharing pleasure. Okay, even within the even under conditions of of duress, of grief, of loss, of pain, they get some. And I've been around folks enough to know. The folks who helped take care of my grandmother, you know, uh, and I've also know that under those conditions, some of those same folks, like when you talk about taking on that, that kind of ideological, mm -hmm. I heard, I heard, them, I heard them say things. I heard, I heard my grandma say things. I mean, it was, it wasn't like it was all pretty, but there were these ways that people figured out how to share. Okay. And what I think people were fighting was how it is that this became an industry, okay? How it is that it became an industry in which the, the, the fundamental condition was how you guard yourself and your interest against the interest of others, particularly the interests of, say, the people who you were actually supposedly trying to help. This, this was a formation that I think you could see at work, a, a, a structure that you could see at work in a nursing home or in a hospital 
where literally the patient becomes your enemy. Their interests are against your interests, right? right? Same, you know, some of y'all in here maybe are academics and you, you know, or you're in grad school and it doesn't take very, it doesn't take but about six months of grad school <laughs> before your students are understood by you to be your enemy, that their interests don't coincide with yours because you're fighting over this very, very precious thing called time, right? That, right? So, so all of the pleasure that, why'd you go into it? Well, I'm weird. I'm a nerd. I like to sit around and talk about weird, cool shit with other people who are just, and I can't, I can't seem to do no better. It's, it's, it's so bad. I can't, I just can't imagine doing anything else. You know, I, 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 you know, I mean, I just, it's just, I just can't, I just can't go that long without talking about Coltrane. I just can't do it. <laughs> and I needed to find some other people. And, and wow, there's a place you could go where there are such people. And you can do it. And you get there, you're like, why does this suck? Why are we... I like to take care of people. I've been doing it ever since I was five. I had a dog, and I took care of my dogs, okay? I, 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 would, try, I would find a bird that fell out of a tree and want to take care of I wanted, I, it just didn't seem like there was any possible thing that could be better than that. Yeah. And this is what I wanted to do. And it doesn't take but about six months before you're like, that person's my enemy, okay? This person whose face I'm wiping or body who I'm bathing, okay, the political economics of this is such that they are the ones who I have to understand myself to be in an antagonist. Okay, so. All I'm trying to say is, these are conditions, that they, they place us under conditions where it makes it seem like this is so. And the way we can get out of these bad thoughts is by getting together with one another. To, to, to celebrate those inklings that we have. Those, those, those sometimes isolated moments in which you are reminded of the thing that you went there to do in the first place. And you were reminded of the pleasures of it. And you say, okay. What I want to know is, how come it doesn't feel this good all the time? Mm -hmm. And once you ask that question, I don't think it's a big, it's a lot, it's mysterious mm -hmm. to try to understand why. So the question, and then you also begin to understand all of the different barriers that have been placed against your being able to collectively ask that question. Yes. Which is why it's like you said, man, it's good to have a place where you can get together and think. Mm -hmm. And people used to go to church, you know, or, or wherever, you know, because this is, and it turns out, again, this is why it's really important that the capacity to get together and think in defense, right, of our capacity to get together and think is, um, is so much more, is, it's not only that it's more important to focus on that than it is to focus on what devils do it's also because most of what devils do almost all of what devils do is meant to regulate and exploit and own and liquidate our capacity to get together and think about what we do okay so um so i'm not saying all that like i got an answer that you didn't already have i'm just agreeing with the question you see. it gave so. me some insights i appreciate it <laughs> but it's because we talk together you see that's yeah. it's not because it's what happened is it we talked about it together and we remind each other of what we know you know i mean socrates wasn't all wrong about, <laughs> you know a lot of things